My name is Steven Solano. I'm class of 2024. I'm a seven foot center, and I go to Donda Academy. Thank you for sitting down with us. Yeah, appreciate you. Watch, watch the play. Uh, you definitely a notch above the rest of the competition. Uh, appreciate it. From, from the center standpoint, uh, give us a little bit about your backstory and where you're from and how you got to Donda. Um, actually, it's crazy because a couple months ago I wasn't even in this situation. I was in a school in Virginia called Catholic High School. Like, it was different. I didn't have all this exposure, all this media, uh, all this like availability to like get better, all this uh, social media outlets like coming and all this exposure. Because before my games, there only be like one or two cameras. But once it got to Donda, my whole atmosphere changed. Like a lot of people started seeing me everything grew and a lot of people really started recognizing me so i feel like all of this is something new like a blessing that i was able to come over here you feel like you kind of went from unknown to known like overnight type situation yeah i um i guess you could say that but like i'm still not known how, how, how i want to but it was I mean, well you somewhat know you you right there you right there ESPN, correct yeah well, where are you right there ESPN right now uh, I think like in the top 100. Yeah. So, uh, how'd you get to Donda? Uh, I got to Donda actually from one of my coaches. Like, he reached out to me. They told me that they reached out to him. They told him that they wanted me to come. It's an opportunity that, that I couldn't say no to. So, I just took it and went with it. How do you, how do you feel like you meshed with the rest of the players from, uh, since you didn't come in like from the beginning of the season? Yeah, I mean, at first it was difficult because you know, all the plays and stuff, I had to learn it very quick. I mean, I got there and two days later, I had to play a game. So like, it was hard adjusting. And so, and seeing the game, how they play the game at that pace at such a young age, like I had to grow really fast in a short amount of time. And I feel like my teammates helped me do that. But I'm definitely still learning, but they helped me learn and speed up that learning process where I had to go through growing pains, adjusting to their skill level and to that top competition and try to like, fit in and try to work with them. You mentioned, you mentioned speed, and when, when, when you mentioned you had to adjust to the speed, the first thing I thought about was the point guard, Robert Dillahan. Yeah. How was, it, how was it playing with Rob, and how did he help you? Because he, he, does, he, he plays extremely fast, so how yeah. were you able to adjust, and how did he help you? I mean, he's definitely a special talent, you know, like, he just tells me what to be at times. He gets on me if I'm not at the right place, at the right time. He want me to finish everything hard at the rim. Like he just tells, he just pushed me to like be the person he know I could be because he's just a leader at, at such a young age. Like he pushed all of us and his game, I feel like translates to all of us. So his, the way he plays the game so fast, very crafty, all that is just, it's definitely something to adjust to. And like playing with him, he made the game easier. Okay, so you basically go from playing at a small school yeah. To headlining on the headlining team with Kanye West, a lot of lights, a lot of cameras. Yeah. How was it, you know, preparing on, on the court, you know, the preparation for yeah. the games, and then once you get there, how was the pressure or your emotions as far as like what it was like to, to perform? Yeah. You know, uh, because y'all had so many people watching, you know, so many cameras. You know, yeah. Anything you do wrong. They on it because so many cameras. Yeah, I mean, it's, it was definitely tough at first because, like, let's say a play you come, you get dunked on something because you we playing the top competition every night. I mean, every other weekend or every weekend, so you come, you get dunked on right away. It's gonna be on slam. Like we play the top players, like Mikey Williams, a well recognized player. A lot of people hate him or like him or not, but if we go if we go at him, that's definitely gonna be on slam by the end of the night. And just all the social media being there is like, I feel like it's a lot of pressure, but we deal with it good. Like, we, we, we uh, keep each other accountable as a team. Like, we tell each other to keep going. I myself got dunked on uh, in our last game. My teammate, JJ Taylor, he's like, keep going. Like, it happens to all of us because it's just something that you're going to have to adjust to if you want to play at the next level. Like, everybody's going to get called. Like, everybody's going to uh, not make not always do the right play or not always look the best but it's just, it's just human and yeah just keep pushing okay so what was the most surprising thing coming to los angeles like 
What was the most shocking thing that you was just like, this is mind blowing? Uh, I mean, I guess uh, it's hard. It's just, we're talking about basketball wise, uh, like just in general. Cultural wise, anything. Uh, there's a lot of traffic, man. <laughs> On the road, like, you can't go nowhere. Like, it's just so much traffic, so much people. I, I know it's a big estate, like, one of the biggest states, but it's just, like, so much people. And I didn't expect this to be that bad, but it's definitely something I see. Like, every day walking to the gym, like, it's just so much people. And actually, like, something I really see is the homelessness around here. Like, a lot of homeless people, like, it's crazy. Like, something that you don't see back home. Not as much. Right. Yeah. Um, can you give us the list of schools that are like communicating with you and you up? Yeah, um, uh, so Nebraska and Virginia Tech, those are the uh two that's really like pushing, but Xavier, St. John's, they they're contacting my coach, like saying they're gonna come watch me. Um uh, NGIT, uh Illinois, Oklahoma State show a lot of interest, like offer me. So basically just a lot of uh, dumb schools, like reaching out to my coaches and telling me to keep going. I just see a lot of me. So, and for them to actually like give me an offer opportunity, it's like a blessing. You said that you uh, came on to Donda Academy because they had an injured big man. What was his name? Uh, Brandon. Brandon, Brandon what? Brandon, okay. Yeah. So, with him being down, was he able to give you kind of pointers as to, you know, ways to make it easier for you to adjust the program? Like, was he a help to you coming into the program? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, he gave me all them little tips and tricks that just make the game easier. Like, let's say I get a rebound, keep it up. Because most most of the time, I wouldn't know, before I used to get a rebound, bring it right down, and you know them guards is quick, they're going to take that ball from you. So, like, he would just tell me, like, be strong with the ball, and... Just every time I get the ball, just try to go up. And if I don't got it, just give it out. Like, it's just simple basketball that he... What was the biggest adjustment uh, as far as school going from uh, school that you were attending before to now? What was the biggest adjustment that you had? Uh, definitely, like, the pace of the game. The pace of the game was much quicker. I mean, playing with those guards like that, like Zion Cruz, Rob, Rob Dillingham, uh, all the... Uh, Lee Shooters, Bryce Baker, like playing with all those type of people, just the way that they move the ball and the catch and shoot, it's just something that has to adjust to. And also like the amount of plays we would implement it because in my old school we would have a couple plays, but they were simple. But now like seeing the, the difficulty of more plays, like the extra pass, the this cut, like it was something I definitely had to adjust to in, in such little time. So it definitely uh, helped me. Um, so there will be a coaching change coming up real soon. Um, you don't have to give us too much information. I, I mean, I'm, no, I'm not sure whether or not you are supposed to give out any information, but um, have they kind of uh, given you an idea of uh, the direction the program is going to go in? Uh, with change? the coaching change? Not, I mean, not really. Nah, I, I think they're looking for a coach. They might have one, but I don't know for sure. But definitely something new. I mean, it's sad that we lost the coach, but I mean, we just got to move on. Uh, what uh, would be one of your biggest takeaways from Coach Frank? Uh, coach Frank definitely uh, pushed me to get better every day. Like, he was definitely somebody that would just tell me, trust the process, keep going. Like, I wouldn't, I, when I first came in, I wouldn't always like get them that much minutes. I mean, he was just telling me, like, in practice, like, learn the plays, get with the, state, get with the uh, program. Like, he would just tell me these little things for me to adjust. And that definitely helped me, and he's definitely somebody that uh, helped me be where I'm at today. Like, he definitely uh, pushed me, and he just, I feel like he's a good guy. What do you think that your role, this upcoming season with Donda, what do you think your role will be with the team? I mean, my role will be... Just play the, play the big man role, rebound, run the floor, get the easy points, uh, blocks, defensive. Just try to stop, get a uh, get a stop every possession. Limit the amount of turnover. I mean, not turnovers, like just points in the paint and stuff like that.
uh, playing with Team Why Not for AAU. Um, give us a little bit about that experience playing with those guys. Uh, I haven't played a game with them, sure, because it's like my first tournament, but okay. I've seen them play. They move the ball really quick. Like, it's, uh, it's a sound team that just gives, 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 finds that extra man, finds that open man, gives that extra pass. So, like, it's definitely a team that I want to play with and a team that I feel like I go get it, they'll get me involved, like, in the post or whatever, like, lob threat, just getting me involved. And that's what we look for as a big man. So as far as Team Why Not and Donda, is there a specific player that you look forward to playing with the most uh, out of those two teams? Like any player? Just any any specific player? Uh, not really. <laughs> yeah. I mean, whatever whatever we got for next year is it what we got. So we are always gonna make it work okay. as a team. Okay. Sure. Um, so at the end of the summer, going into your next season, what is the thing that you want to improve the most in your game? Uh, as I feel like I want to get stronger, like my body, get my body right. I feel like my body's right right now, but I just want to get stronger, more physical, and uh, my ability to run the floor. So like, find, when I run the floor, they will give me that pass in the open lane, easy two points, and get back for my stamina, uh, speed, so stuff like that. Yeah. Um, this is my last question. Um, top three pro cities. Which ones would you want to play for in the future? Uh, pro cities? I, I mean, Houston, Texas. <laughs> uh, I think I know why, but I, I won't ask. Well, go ahead. Go New ahead. York. New York. Because that's my home, like the garden. Like, who don't want to play in the garden? Right. And I feel like LA, because of the weather. Like, everybody loves LA. Everybody loves the weather. Yeah. It's just good. Who wouldn't want to be out here? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I was watching the documentary. Uh, just actually making the cut. And uh, it was showing, uh, you were fed up in the room with one of your teammates. Yeah. And it was showing your eating habits. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You, uh, you have quite, a, quite an appetite. Uh, yeah. How does that go as far as like, you know, you're in prep school and you, you seem like, like how does that, how, do, how, does, how does Donda make sure you guys uh, get the type of uh, food that, you know, I mean, I have no clue how they do yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, nah, they feed us good. It's, it's really good. Like, they give us meal prep. So we got prep meals, three meals a day, four meals a day. They just drop off our meals, and, like, we can eat how many we want. And when our, like, prep meals run out, we just get new ones. So they make a variety of things, like jerk chicken wings, uh, Cajun fish, um, steamed chicken with broccoli. Like, it's just different things that... Uh, will fill our appetite and it's healthy, a healthy option because it's better than just going outside and getting something like a fast food or something. So they definitely make sure that we're right in our body, like getting the right, putting the right things in our body, drinking the right uh, smoothies, supplements. So definitely uh, look out for us in that in that aspect. So Donna, basically, they definitely have the food covered. Yeah, yeah, they got the food covered, yeah, for sure, for sure. Because, you know, growing, you need the food, like, just something like you get hungry as, as I mean, I'm it young. Was, it was like I I was watching uh, I guess the YouTube again and talk to me what if you played on the Dominican national team. National yeah. team. Yeah. Uh, I believe I I don't know if I said I forget who it was, but talk to me a little bit about how it was representing your country. I mean, it was a good experience. Like we went out there to the DR, uh, trained for like a month with the team. It's a new experience, like new team, didn't know any of them. And just for us to come together and uh, learn those plays so fast, it was definitely a good experience. Like seeing how they don't have like the same opportunity as us. So they go two times as hard, like their, hung their hunger, their hustle. It's just something that, it's just something that really humbled me and really like opened my eyes, like to see that not everybody has the same opportunity. Like for example, when we was going against Team USA, which featured like the top players, Rob Dillingham, Colin Boswell, Ron Holland in the 2023 class. They didn't back down. And for them to for them to fight like that, I mean, we still lost by a good amount, but we, we battled. And for them to fight, yeah, for them to fight the whole time, it's just something that showed me that they really have heart.